Hey everyone, it's Triple Mango Threat, and today we're talking about mana rocks you should be playing but aren't. Let's jump right into it. So the cards we're playing are cards like Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Commander Sphere, and Azorius Signet. These are obviously overused in all of our decks, and they're a little bit on the expensive side. Soul Ring is coming at around two to three dollars. Arcane Signet about the same price, but Commander Sphere is probably a fifty cent or less card. So today I want to talk to you about mana rocks you should be playing, or even mana rocks you don't even know about. So starting with the colorless mana, let's talk about Guardian Idol, Seer's Lantern, and Mana Prism. These mana rocks are going to tap for one colorless mana. And they're also very versatile with the fact that we can scry with Seer's Lantern, we can make Guardian Idol a creature, and Mana Prism can get us a colored mana if we pay one and tap it. We can cast these early in the game, so we're going to be able to ramp and be able to cast those bigger cards we have. Moving on to the Mana Rocks that produce one color of mana, let's talk about the Totem Cycle. We can pay three and then tap it to get the one color of mana the card produces, and we can also pay its ability to make it a creature later in the game. I would really recommend these cards in a monocolor deck. It's going to give us some versatility of making it a creature. And again, it's giving us that mana and it's going to be helping us ramp. Moving on to the Ramos cycle, we can pay three and then tap it for whatever one color of mana we're needing. We can also sacrifice it to get the one mana the card also produces. So for example, with Eye of Ramos, we're paying three, we can tap it for one blue mana. We can also sacrifice it the same turn and get another blue mana. So we can pay three and get two blue mana. These cards are really sweet and can help us get that mana we're needing in a pinch. Heraldic Banner and Pillar of Origins are creature focused in the sense that when Heraldic Banner enters the battlefield, we have to choose a color, so this is probably going to go in a monocolored deck, but creatures we control of the chosen color get plus one plus zero. We can also tap it to add one mana of the chosen color. Pillar of Origins, when it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type, so for example, vampires. We can tap it to add any color to our mana pool, but we can only spend this to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. So we're really wanting to put this in a deck that is all vampires, all squirrels, it all should be the same creature type. Last up is Spinning Wheel. For three mana, we can tap it for one mana of any color. We can also pay five and tap it to tap target creature. So if we really need to, we can tap someone's creature that's going to hit us for lethal damage, and it's also a mana rock we can use. Next, we're going to be talking about the mana rocks that can give us two options of colors. Let's talk about the Border Post. We can pay one and return a basic land to our hand instead of paying the CMC of the card. They also enter tapped, but they can tap for the two colors that we're needing. So what's great about Firewild Border Post, it's in red and green, which is a very heavily used color combination that loves to have landfall. So if we return a basic to our hand, that's another trigger of landfall we could be using. Next, we're talking about the locket. So for example, Azorius Locket. We pay three, we can then tap it for a white or blue, or we can pay four white, four blue, interchangeably. We can tap it, sacrifice it, and then draw two cards. So if we need to draw two cards later in the game, this is going to give us that possibility. Again, I think these are underused because nobody really really wants to pay three for one whenever we have cards like Soul Ring where we can pay one for two. And same thing with the Clue Stones, the exact same thing except we pay those two colors, we can tap it, sacrifice it, but we're going to draw one card. So again, if we don't need this Mana Rock, we can then sacrifice it later in the game to draw a card. And again, with more similarities, we're going to talk about the Monument. We pay three, they can tap for one or the other color, but this time we can actually pay four and the two colors that they produce to make a creature which we can then hit our opponent with if we really needed to, or we can even block with it. Then we have the cameo cycle, which is pretty much the same thing as I've been talking about. We pay three, we get one or the other color. These don't give us the bonus of, hey, you can sacrifice it later in the game, but still, these are more mana rocks we could be using in our deck. Firemind Vessel. For four mana, it comes into play tapped, but then we can tap it and add two mana of different colors. So this can be red and white, white and blue. It has to be two different colors, but still, four for two is a really good card especially because it's colored mana. Last I want to talk about is Colony Gem for four mana. When it enters the battlefield, we're going to return two lands we control to their owner's hand. So this is a great card for landfall because, again, more triggers are going to be happening because we're playing those lands. And then we can tap it to add two of any one color to our mana pool. So unlike Firemind Vessel, this is going to be two of the same color. Next, we're going to be talking about mana rocks that can give us up to three colors to choose from with the Obelisk Cycles. So we have Bant, Naya, Esper, Jund, and Grixis. If you're playing three or more colors, these are a great option for you to play. Instead of paying three for just two colors, we can pay three to get up to three colors if we need to use one of them. Next is the Crystal Cycle. We have Indantha, Ketria, Rogrim, Savai, and Zagroth. If you're not playing any of the other colors, 
This is the other cycle that can help us with those three or more color decks that weren't offered in the previous cycle. And these also have cycling, which means we can pay two and discard this card to draw a card. So again, if we don't need this mana rock, we can discard it from our hand and draw a card. Last up is the banner cycle, which we can tap for one of the three colors, and then we can pay those three colors, sack it to draw a card. So again, if we don't need it later in the game, or we just really need to draw a card in response to something, this is always an option. And our last category are the mana rocks that can tap for any one color, such as Mana Geode. We pay three, it enters the battlefield, we get to scry one, and then we can tap it for one mana of any color. I don't know why people are not playing this card. Knowing what's going to come next is very important in Magic, and so if we don't need a land on the top of our library, we can then put it on the bottom, and maybe we'll get something else we actually need. So, Mana Lith for three, we can tap it to add one mana of any color. We don't get the option of scrying, but again, this can go in any deck, and it gets us one mana of any color. Fountain of Icker for three, we can tap it, we can add one mana of any color. We can also pay three, and it becomes a 3-3 dinosaur artifact creature until end of turn. So if there was a board wipe, we can then pay three and hit our opponent for three, even though there's no creatures on the battlefield. Sphere of the Suns for two mana. It enters the battlefield tapped with three charge counters on it. We can tap it to remove a charge counter from Sphere of the Suns, and then we can add one mana of any color to our mana pool. So this is only going to be good for three turns unless we can find ways to put more counters on it. We can do this with cards like Atraxa. She loves to proliferate, and that means adding counters. So this is a decent card to go in Atraxa. Or again, we can use it for those first three turns. And last, I want to talk about Corrupted Graphstone for two mana. It enters the battlefield tapped, but we can tap it, we can choose a color of a card in our graveyard, add one mana of that color to your mana pool. So in the early game, this is probably not going to be very useful to you, but if you are playing a deck that loves graveyard interaction, even early in the game, this is a great mana rock for you to use. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, comment below what you think of this video, and subscribe for more Mango content. I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, peace.